sit and prepare. Men, you got to learn to prepare by practicing for the battle. Amen. Amen. You know there's a battle that we're facing in today's time, in today's churches, and if we as men are not prepared for the battle, then defeat is looming over our heads. Right. You see, all of the great athletes would get up early in the morning, Michael Jordan and, and Kobe Bryant and, 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 and LeBron, they would get up early before anybody show up in the gym and start practicing. Start preparing, working hard, and sweating all for one game. Right. Are y'all here with me? Not only did we see men who were walking in their purpose, manhood, it requires men who are dependable and men who are diligent, but also it requires men, look at the third part of it, it requires men who are disciplined. All right. What is that, Pastor Lynch? It's right there in the verse. Men who are disciplined. It says, watch this, these 50,000 men kept rank. Are y'all here with me? They kept rank. They stayed in order. The word discipline means the practice of training people to obey rules. It means not only to obey rules or to live by a code of conduct. The question this morning is, what code of conduct do you live by? What rules do you have that you practice day in and day out? They knew how to follow rules. And they were faithful men, watch this, to their leaders. Because we've been conditioned as black men specifically to compete with one another. Wow. 
So we are not conditioned to stand side by side with one another. I'm put in the work. So again, I want to thank you for allowing God to move in you, and I hope that I can uh, measure up to what you expect. Now, I'm here to talk to you about the importance of leveling up on your finances, but before I can do that, I need to give you a sense of purpose and motivation. Why? Why is that important? Because no one like the black man has been commodified in the way that we have. We have lost sense of who we are. And I, I tell the people I talk to now that we are in the era of the body and the bag. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Well, we've been commodified to a point that every conversation on social media is, can he pay all the bills? Right. Nobody's asking, can he lead? Nobody's asking, can he cover? Nobody's asking, can he anchor? And most importantly, nobody's asking, is he the foundation? Right, right, right. But he's a, does he have the bag? And then the crazy thing is, me being a researcher and, and the person that asks the questions and needs to know, I understand that all these people that are on social media, media front, and I, I know that the median income for black men is 40000 Right. I know that there are only 6% of black men who have PhDs. Right. And only 6% of black, no, 1% of black men have PhDs. 6% of black men make six figures. That's right. Mm -hmm. But everybody out there paying bills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we lost ourselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take you uh, in the beginning. And so uh, someone who uh, found out that I was going to be speaking asked me what I was going to be speaking on. And I said, well, I'm going to be speaking on wealth. But um, I said, no. I'm going to be speaking on your manhood is your motive. I'm going to tie it to wealth. And I'm going to start with Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to start reading. Uh, and I'm going to do it from the King James Version today. I'm going to go old school. Uh, Say so these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day of the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Here comes the good part. It says, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Why? Because there was no man to ground, to till the ground. There was no man to put in work. There was no man to manage it. So if I had to start with something, it's management. It's, it, it, it's referred to in a number of different things, dominion. He huh. gave man work. Now, in order to really understand, it's kind of funny because as a kid, I was extremely uh, talkative, precocious. I had this unbelievable memory. So at two years old, uh, my brother took the Bible, brought a switch into the room, Sit down and say, if you can remember all those songs on the radio, you finna learn it. She taught me the story of the creation. Then when I learned it, she made me go around to churches and schools and every organization and auxiliary you could think of and recite it. But it gave me questions. And one of the things that you learn in school, uh, uh, you heard, probably heard a uh, pastor refer to me as doctor. I have dual doctors. One is in theology, the other is in psychology. Uh, so I searched this thing because it was important for me to understand. I wasn't the one you could tell because I said so. I stayed in trouble as a kid. You couldn't just tell me because I said, I need to know why. Yeah. But then, so when you look at Genesis 1 and 2, is one is a summary, two is the details. Mm -hmm. All right. Because you'll see in one, he created it, but he did. But, but, but he said there was no man to till it. And, so then you come with purpose and you come with work. So I want to leave you with something as far as the motive of your manhood. Uh, your manhood as your motive, in other words. And what's that? That you were given the work, that you're the foundation. We are taught as men and we fight for you if we don't understand it, that we're the head of the house. And the natural image that comes into the head of a person who doesn't understand who they are is that I'm at the top note. As the head, you're at the bottom. Why? Because you came first. What comes first? The foundation. 
Right. Right. God built you as the foundation. He placed Adam as the foundation. He gave Adam the instructions before he ever brought Eve into the game. Right. Right. That's why when Eve ate of the fruit, nothing happened. Right. Right. He had gave the instructions to Adam. Yeah. Right. Now, in this thing that we have to understand before, and, and I'm, I'm going to get to the money thing, trust me. But what you need to understand is why you're here, because most of the problems we face as black men is because we don't understand who we are. Right. That is literally an agenda to keep us confused. Yeah. Keep us confused. Yeah. Yeah. If we're not being feminized in our image, we're being emasculated in our position. Come on, right. check this out. If you go back to Prior to 1960, they won't let you know this, but we were doing pretty good. Amen. Yeah. We owned our own cars, our own cab companies, our own bus companies, yes, we owned sir. our own grocery stores. We owned all those things, and then we decided that we didn't fit in or we didn't have what we needed because we wanted to belong to something we weren't built to be in. Right. And all then right. we gave up what we had, and here's what they did. They said, well, wait a minute. Even in immigration, they're still strong. There's something. We got to break up with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How are we going to do it? What we're going to do is we're going to take what the man does, how he identifies with himself. Mm -hmm. He's a provider. Mm -hmm. He's a provider. We take his ability to provide away from him. Then we turn around and we supply her with what he can't give her. Ooh. Ooh. We create dissension. We, we, we create separation. We create anxiety. We create frustration. You see, right. the man has the vision, but the woman has the spiritual insight. Our brains work different. We're not just physiologically different. We are psychologically different. We are spiritually different because we were meant to come together and sink our energies, creating a synergy that allows us to do what we cannot do alone. God designed us to work together. He made her, he made her our help me. But we, we, we lost that. Now, I'm going to move this on. But then, then, then what happens is if you go into this whole thing, there's a dichotomy in the creation of man, right. or the making of man, there is the word asa in Hebrew, which means to make. Mm -hmm. That means you take something and you make something. So that's the ground, that's the body, that's the housing. But there's a part that says also bath bara, which means to create from nothing, meaning that out of God, he gave of himself and gave spiritual energy to that thing and then breathe the breath of life into it, creating a trichotomy, as uh, Dr. Fletcher said. I'll, I'll talk to you, Pastor West, about putting you behind Dr. Fletcher, trying to follow. That was a blessing, but, 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 but I'll, I'll do what I can. But it, 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 it's, it's, it's that thing that you're given, but, 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 but we will go to Zechariah 12 and 10, it says, and, 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 and it should come to pass afterward that sons and daughters will prophesy. It's talking about the pouring out of the Spirit. That's that thing again, the Spirit. Pouring out of the Spirit says, the old men will what? Dream, dream. Dream, dream. Young men will what? Vision. vision. So you need visions yeah. and yeah. dreams. Yeah. If you don't have a vision, that's because you have a what? And for the young man, what is your vision? Your vision is a preview of your purpose. Right. Wow. A vision is an idea and an image. And what we know in psychology is that if I can visualize it, I can do it. Yeah. If I can put it in my mind, if I can conceive it in my mind, let me, let me put this on you, then I'm going to go into finance. I'm going to put this in your mind. If I can conceive it in my mind, that's God's evidence that it's possible. What are you saying, Dr. Listen, when we, we talk about the benevolence of God, we talk about the goodness of God, we talk about how great God is, we talk about God's love. Well, let me see. If God is benevolent, if God is good, if God is awesome, if God has his intention for me, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Right, right, right. Not to harm you, but to prosper you. Right. To give you a future. Well, if that's your plans, then you would give me the ability to think of something I can never have. Right, right, right. So the very notion that I can think of, it tells me that it's possible. Oh, yeah. Now, now, faith is what? The substance of things. Oh, boy. What? The evidence of things. What? So, just because I can't see it in the physical, just because it's not reasonable to other people doesn't mean that it's not possible. No things shall be withheld. Nothing shall be what? Impossible. All things are possible. 
So then we are given this thing, though, but what did they do? Let's talk about it. He talked about the books. Of, my 25th book was The War on Black Wealth. Yes. And it talks about the number of different things that have happened to us since we were slaves. I, I uh, started my research in the 90s on the cusp of the idea that it's been 100 plus years, it's time for y'all to let it go. Tired of hearing about slavery. Get over it. Now, nobody's told our brothers the Jews to get over it. Yes. Matter of fact, try and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we were told that, so I went back and I started to research about multi-generational trauma. What I found is, they act like after we were released in 1865, that we were given counseling for the 246 years of trauma we went through before that. Come on. Uh, they act like we were given land the 40 acres of the mule we were promised. They act like we didn't get 12 years of reconstruction where they totally put the South back to where it was. They ran, if you don't understand what reconstruction was, reconstruction were the 12 years following the emancipation where they actually bombed Northern military installations in the South, where the Klan rolled clandestine missions, burning and shooting and killing, to the North said, man, we pulling out, we losing too much. Right. And they left us down here. Yeah. Then we got black codes. Black code says you can't own property, you can't get certain jobs, you can't work here. Yes, sir. Then they turn around after they gave black codes and pretty much made us homeless and without work, yeah. and then illegalized being a favorite. Sure. They made it a felony not to have a job and a home. Then they put you up and locked you up and then leased you back out to the very plantations you had been freed from. But well, we were supposed to get over it, but you don't understand. They're widening the gap. The wealth gap. The whole time they're widening. And then they went through redlining where they made it very difficult for blacks to own homes. Why? Because if only one black family lived in a white neighborhood, white money was withheld from that entire community. Right. Right. Then they went through urban renewal, benign neglect, where they literally withdraw resources from the inner city and redistributed it, right. suffocated. Right. Then we went to mass incarceration, this, edu this education, and now we're in the mass movement of gentrification. Yes, sir. All inhibiting. But here's where they got the black man. So he's up there. He doesn't even need the education, especially in the Midwest, because why? We were in the middle of a uh, major industrial revolution. Why? If you could work at a factory, the people up north in the Midwest, Detroit and all that, Indianapolis, all that, they're working at uh, auto plants. Right. Down here, we're working offshore. We're working on the uh, ship channel. We're making money. The man took care of the home. The woman was able to stay care of home, stay at home, take care of home, and everything was good. They deindustrialized the inner city. Yes, sir. They, they shut down the plants. Then what did they do in the 80s? They took auto mechanic shop, wood shop, That's all it. those all things right. that yeah. don't require a degree. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. gives you six figures. See, they, don't, they don't tell you to go out and get, go, go get that uh, certification to become an auto mechanic. That's six figures like easy. Yeah. Right. If you understand how mechanics flag time yeah. and yeah. what they get paid to do what they do, yes, sir. electricians, plumbers, Plumbers are looked down on, and most of them are making more than the average person by a long shot. Yeah. 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 But they de industrialized. Oh, why? We're going to take the power. Well, then we're going to hype up degrees. Yeah. And as a man with something, I'm going to tell you something. It's a catch if you don't understand the value of the degree you're getting versus what you're going to get in return. Right. Everything in life is about an investment. That's right. You're investing your emotion in something. You're investing your time in something. You're investing your money in something. You're investing your hopes in something. What happens is you go out and you pay $100,000 for an education that only pays you $30,000 a year. Wow. Why do you pay that back? Now keep in mind, you're coming from a situation that you're not getting the advantage of your white counterpart. But you see, what I can tell you as someone who's invested in real estate, that white counterpart, when they come out of college, they're going to go out and mom and, mom and dad or grandma and grandpa are going to yeah. see their first home. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We told them, look, it's 18. You're going to start playing rent. You're going to get a five. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and so what we do is we haven't developed the understanding of the importance of generational wealth. Sir, sir, and sir. the wealth gap is widening, and we're frustrated with power. Now let me tell you something. This is my, this might upset some of you, but as uh, he'll tell you, I, I say it all the time. I'm not here to make people like me. All right. Uh, I promise God one thing that I will speak the truth. Yes, Truth doesn't always come across smooth, right. but right. it's coming from love. Let me tell you something. We have, since the uh, Voter Right, Voters Rights Act, the Civil Right, passing the Civil Rights Act, we have turned out every presidential cycle in increasing numbers. We vote 90% Democrat. We don't demand anything in return for this vote that we say is so precious. Well, and then we get frustrated when we can't make them do what we want them to do. Right, right, we right. miss the big part. If, you're, if your vote isn't backed by economic power, right. if your riot or your protest isn't backed by economic power, see, if I don't have the ability to apply consequence, yeah. I don't have any power to control behavior. Right. That starts with your children at home. And it never stops. People talk about morality, but we live in an immoral society run by immoral people. They're not worried about morality. We're still thinking if we can convince them of what they're doing to us that somehow they're going to stop. They know. They've got 1,300 think tanks that tell them everything they need to know about us, how we move, how we think, what we do, what we like, what drives our buying decisions. How to emotionally trigger us anytime we might start to figure it out. Yeah. They know that. You know how many think tanks we got? Three. The Harvest Institute, right. the Odyssey Project, which I run, and a couple of shaky ones. But that's it. They got 1,300 that I know about. Everything from finance to school to politics. That, that's why you see something that's a spin on it before you get it, because they already know how to deliver it. Right. <laughs> and then you're sitting up and you're going, that, that, back to the body and the bag, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. The body and the bag is this. The guy gets the bag, and now the woman has been told that her value is in her body. Oh. We got sisters oh. dying over in the DM trying to get these BBLs because they need to be a 10 to get the bag to do with the bag. Yeah. And see, I got this thing about manhood. To simplify it, because I have an organization called Black Men League, which is about socializing young black males. And so the body, uh, the, there, there are the five P's. Now, I have another principles of parenthood, but I have five P's of manhood to make it simple. And most people are going to talk about, these are your provider. This is your provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely need to be a provider. But you know what your first calling as a man is with your family? Protect. Yeah. Amen. You are supposed to be a covering, yes. spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. And I tell the boys that I'm working with, I say, you want to know something? Long before you develop a skill set, the mindset, and the maturity to go out and earn a living, you have the physical capacity to defend. I said, when you're born, if you're born with a twin sister, when y'all first born, y'all are the same size, y'all pretty much do things the same way. She may be faster than you, she may be even able to beat you up. But at a certain point in time, your voice starts to change. You start to become physically more powerful. You start to grow. What's happening? The, the testosterone is kicking in. What's happening? Yes, sir. The first thing that you notice is your voice change. What's the voice? The, your voice is actually the first sign of what? Intimidation. Say, hey, watch out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a man here. Yes, That's why the male lion roars deeper than the female right. lion. Right. Right. He announces himself before you ever see him. Most of the time, he ain't ever got to throw hands. Why? You know them. So the first thing is, and, and tell the truth, we're more intimidated by a deeper voice than we are by a lighter voice. It doesn't mean that the lighter voice don't bring heat. It's just that natural thing, right? Okay, then after that, you start to get stronger. I tell them, I say, here's the thing. Not only are you getting stronger, you know that you're getting a little edgy. You're becoming more naturally aggressive. That aggression and that physicality isn't meant to harm. It's meant to protect. Right, right, right. It's not meant to be turned on her. It's meant to protect. So your first job is protection. Then you become a provider. Right. Now providing isn't just the money. Come on. It's the safety because here's what happens when you provide safety to a woman. She becomes your incubator. Right. 
Now, and, and what do I mean by that? Tell me anything you can give a woman and she's in her space where she doesn't have to fear you. She doesn't have to fear the bills not being paid. She doesn't have to fear anything. And tell me, tell me anything you can give her when you come back is the way you gave it to her. You buy groceries, she turns it into a meal. Yes, sir. You buy a, a house, she turns it into a home. Yes, sir. You plant your seed in her. 40 weeks later, she brings back to you your child. Yes, you put your vision inside her spiritual womb, and you'll see things you never thought possible. But she's doing that. But what have they got us doing? They've got us focusing on the body and the bag. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on the money. Why? Because you need to be able to what? Walk in and fulfill your vision to what? Have dominion. Now, and I'm going to close it with this. In, in, in having dominion, what do I mean? I mean that you were created by God to have dominion. You were created by God because God decided in his wisdom that he was going to colonize earth with the culture of heaven. See, we, we lose it. We have the religion turned it around. Everybody's so hyped about getting to heaven. You missed the point that God was trying to create the culture of heaven yeah, in the earth. Yeah, and right. if you think that I'm kidding, go back. The, the, the disciples asked, so how should we pray? Right. Said, our Father, who art where? In heaven. In heaven. How, O oh, Lord, be your name. Yeah. Thy kingdom, what? Come. Oh. Thy will be done. Yeah. Oh. Where? Or on earth as it what? Yes, now you look at any kingdom on earth and look where it colonized and what happened. You go to the Bahamas, you go to Jamaica, they were colonized by what? Great Britain. They drive on the left, they drink tea. Yes, right. yes. They behave and act and do what? Like what? The kingdom. You go to different places in Africa that's been colonized by France, by uh, the UK, by Belgium. And they do what? They behave the same way. Our responsibilities as men was to be the foundational outlay of what? Bringing the culture of heaven to earth. Yes, sir. We, were, we were so ready to run from the responsibility of who we are yeah. and where our purposes are. Right. That a bunch of us are just look, well, I'm just, I'm just trying to get to heaven. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just ready to come and, and I can't wait to. And the bottom line is, you miss something. See, God is not confined or restrained by time. So that means He created time for this particular point in time in here so that we have a stretch of things that can be measured in time to do what we were put here to do. Right. And that's what we are missing is that, hey, Am I living in this purpose? Am I operating in what God gave me to do? Am I fulfilling it? And a part of that is the building of wealth. Why? Because wealth comes power, resources to do what? Fulfill the vision. All right. Yeah. It says that 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 that, that, uh, that uh, God gives us the what? The strength to create wealth. All right. Right. Now here's the thing. When I walked in, the theme was being spoken on development. You develop into who you're going to become. You're not born that way. Right. You're born with the gift, but the gift is laying dormant. That's why you got so many people operating in the box of average and meandering through the maze of mediocrity. It's because they never activated the gift. Right, you're right. They never developed or matured the gift. Some of them are exploiting it. They got the gift of gab, but they're not using it for the proper reason. They right. got the gift of problem solving, but they're not using it for the right reason. Yeah. Right. What this morning, guys? So what you got to understand is that everything that they've been using to build wealth is there. The first thing I'm going to give you is compound interest. Yeah, yeah. We use it in reverse. Mm -hmm. We buy cars. We buy houses. First thing we say is, I got a house, I got an asset. No. Mm -hmm. An asset, by definition, is what? Something that appreciates in value, right. something that can be used as collateral, right, right. and something that can be insured. If, it, if you don't have those three, you don't have an asset. Right. A house when you first buy it is your biggest liability. Right. 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 You, don't, you don't even own it. Your name is on the deed, yeah. but the people in the bank own it. Right. And now as you pay into it and build equity, you start to develop the capacity for creating an asset. Right. Right. We've got to learn how to invest in assets. Compound growth is if, uh, the course that I created, the Path to Generational Wealth. It's an online course. 
I spent 10 years chasing down the people's names you know, Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, uh, David Swinston. David Swinston took Yale's endowment from two billion to 22 billion in less than 10 years. Wow, wow. Ray Dalio runs the largest hedge fund in the world, $165 billion hedge fund. He's shut it down, he's not even taking anybody down. You had to have major billions of assets to even it contribute to his hedge fund. But what, you, what I did, and like I said, it took me that long because obviously you don't call those people up and say, okay, Rick, yeah, pass it through. But, but here's the other thing. I don't believe in can't. That's right. I don't accept can't. It's yeah. not in my vocabulary. That's right. right. Come on, Dad. Yeah. I'm not impressed by you, but you got knowledge I need to pass to my people. So I'm going to pursue you relentlessly. They <laughs> said, should I pursue you? <laughs> Yeah, you should pursue them, and you, you shall overtake them, and you will reclaim all that has been taken from you. See, you owe me. That's right. And I'm coming for it so that I can return it to my brother. Oh, man. And, and I'm not going to be apologetic by it. I'm going to tell say you that, that Say that. Yeah. Because my brother would have a right to what was taken from them. Right. And then they have the audacity to call reparations handouts. No, see, although my great-great-grandfather is dead, he earned that. Yeah. You turned it and flipped it a hundred times. I won my part. Uh -huh. That's right. But I gotta be smart in how I do it because sitting up and complaining don't get it. I tell you all the time, why and complaining ain't a plan. That's right. Why and complaining is not a plan, nor neither is it a strategy. See, what we gotta do is we gotta come together like this. We gotta come together, we gotta collaborate. See, something else they put in our heads and we took it and we live religiously by it. You don't talk to your finances. That's why we got so many men in this room right now yeah. going through struggles. Nobody know about it because you've been told that real men don't need help. You've been told that real men do it by themselves. You listen to them clowns sit up and say they were self-made. Oh, Ain't no yeah. such thing. Oh, we were designed to collaborate. Yeah. That's right. He just told you that David didn't do it by himself. That's right. That's right. Then why are you sitting there with David? If David had made out the God's own heart, yes, called and anointed by Samuel, couldn't do it by himself, what makes you think that you're supposed to? Yeah. Oh, oh, but that's God. what they got you thinking, oh, that if you are a real man, you don't ask for help. So you sit there struggling. Yeah. And you, you're creating a tough, contentious situation in your home because the more you struggle financially, the more unsafe she feels right. and the more hard it is for her to trust you. Yeah. When all you got to do is pick up the phone and say, Pastor, I'm yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, sir. I'm going yeah. to leave you with this. <laughs> Wealth isn't discovered. It's created. Every last one of you has the mind of God. The same mind that created it. Heaven and earth and everything within it and gave it purpose. You have access to that mind. The answers are in that mind. And so I'm going to encourage you. Get together. Pick up the phone. Create a circle. You're going to be the average of the five people you spend the most time with. In earning, in character, in how you move. There's nothing wrong with saying I need to be around people who are where I want to be. Yeah. That's right. Because they, by their very presence, yeah. All right. will inspire you. Yeah. Again, I want to thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. God bless all of you. chapter verses 11 through 13. They came, they, they are not as talking as Dr. Uh, Dr. Wallace said quite well. Yeah. We were made for this pretty much. Amen. Amen. They're not us. 
we're made differently. And yes, God intentionally made us the way He made yes, us. Yes, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to dumb it down. Just be a man. Come on. Mm -hmm. I like the upset me a lot of times. Oh, still oh. me. My kids don't understand me sometimes. But when I come back for them, they still love me. So we have to do me. Let me, let me move on and give you my scripture for the, I don't want to be the reason you stay here all day long and just all the other exciting things going on in the community. But Sam, your first time, your third chapter, verse 11. Um, and the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle, and that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house when I began. I will also make an end. For I have told him that I uh, will judge his house for every for every for the forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, mm -hmm. and he restrained them, restrained it them not. not. Mm -hmm. God bless you, the person of the Lord. Uh, I know my, my, my thought is to talk to you concerning uh, fatherhood, but if, if I could just end fatherhood, there is something that I think that we need to understand. Uh, there's a danger of absent fathers. Amen. 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 There's a danger Amen. in absent fathers. When I look at this particular passage of scripture, and I understand something, Eli did not uh, raise his family according to the word of God. All right. Here we go. Now, scripture in Proverbs 22nd and 6th that tells us to train up a child in the way that it should go. That he should go. That's right. That when he's old, he will not. Yeah. I don't think Eli did that. And some of you might say, well, it's, it's, it's not fair to look at Eli and say he didn't do that because kids, his children are all grown. But, but, but what he's looking at or what we look at in his kids in this text, it, it didn't happen overnight. It was a progressive problem yeah, yeah. that was allowed to exist unchecked. Right, right. Fatherhood gives you a right to check some things. Come on, man. Come on, man. And, and, and you, you would check it to straighten it out, That's right. not to destroy it. Right. Right. Real fathers are not to hurt their family. Right. 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 They said earlier, we are protectors. And if your kid is going to be successful in life, you have to make sure the foundation in which they stand on right. is right. a true foundation. Yes, right. it is. Right. Um, so he didn't, he didn't really train his kids up to follow after what God has mandated. He taught them how to work in the temple. He taught them the how to minister before the Lord, how to light the incense, and how to be sure that the lamp of God was lit and would continue to burn in the temple. He taught them those things. But what he failed to do was be their father in every situation. I'm going to move on here. I'm not trying to stay all day. Uh, so some of you have problems. That he allowed his, his kids to grow up and he was absent. Mm. Present in body, but as a parent, he was absent. absent. Yes, sir. What'd you say? Sadly, some men feel if they go to work and bring themselves and their money home, well, that's taking care of home. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we can show support to our children by showing up. 
for the uh, 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 sports events. But how many times have we spent time with our children teaching them the word God? Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, instructing them the importance of knowing God for themselves. Right. It's not it's more than just feeding your children. Yeah. We've got to find time for them. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.